Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's the thing. It's the magic right. of the circus and you guys are here for it. And I'd just like to welcome everyone very specifically today. So we've got Brian Cranston, Angelina Jolie, Sam Rockwell, Danny DeVito, Helen Mirren, Chaka Khan, Chaka Khan, Philippa Sue, <laughs> Brooklyn Prince, Ariana Greenblatt, Ramon Rodriguez, Ron Funches, Mike White, and director and master cat wrangler, Thea <laughs> Sherrick. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Our fearless leader. Yes. Yes. Truly. Now, you guys, I'd like to kick this off Do by asking lie. you all the same question. And so I will, I'll give you a heads up with your name when we're gonna come to you. But I actually think that the character Bob is rather prophetic. So one of his, the things that he said really caught my attention. He said, we're all a little artsy. And yeah, we are. I love, yeah, I love yeah. that. And so I actually wanted to kick this off by asking everybody how you're a little bit artsy outside of your acting. Tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe something we don't know. Why don't we start with you, Brian? Well, I, I, I agree with you. I think the character of Bob um, is a little pathetic. Is that <laughs> what you said? Is that pathetic, uh, right? Uh, I, in this world of COVID-19 and lockdown, I, uh, I've actually started baking sourdough bread and um, <laughs> quite, quite proud of it actually it's, nice. uh, it's fun in in our in our world of of self motivation and developing your own characters and it, it takes a lot of um, it takes a lot of energy and but you you don't really follow any rules and so I thought you know uh, following a recipe is kind of fun in that That's regard. really cool but do it's you, been do, fun. You, do you grow the the, the, the yeast and the, that'll be next oh, here we go yeah <laughs> and you do the whole thing and you yeah. let it rot and then you take do you add things to it now or you just what kind of do you make sourdough or you make what do yeah. you make? i make i make sourdough i get the yeast from the back of your ears yeah. and that is the starter <laughs> that, I use. Uh, okay. that makes it sour extra sour okay I get it. I'm try it really Danny, what is like, it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay well very good on the artsy on the artsy thing what first came to mind with me is when I first ran away from home at um, 16, I actually joined the circus. Wow. Um, what? Seven, for Ooh, seven wow. months. Wow, who knew? I ran away with this guy named Robert, who's lovely. We went, I was with the Barnum and Bla Bailey Blue Circus for about six or seven months. We took a train. Um, I didn't know what I was doing, where I was going but I met this lovely guy named Bob at a club and he was with the circus and he asked me, I wanted to come along and I went. And I actually was a rope girl and I rode the elephant girl around the Tenali. I uh, in love with an elephant named Calcutta and I was a rope girl where they spin that rope around and you have to put your foot in on. It's really okay. cool. It's great. So yeah, yeah. this really brought back, Oh yeah. doing this um, film, this, Really brought back memories of the circus. I was thinking, well, what could wow. I be today? I would love to. That's amazing. I miss, I, I miss circus, yeah. Sort of. Danny, why don't you jump That's, in there? You had I mean, a lot I wouldn't to say do about the sourdough. Circus. I would say like my big, I would, you know, maybe the, I might get on the elephant for a bit, but no, I don't think, the rope thing might be a little bit wacky for me. Well, it, yeah, it would really be really spinning, right? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then I'm, I'm yelling you crazy, and I. Yeah. yeah. Where were you? What what state was that? I'm I'm from Chicago. Chicago. Wow, that yeah. was amazing. Born and raised in Hyde Park. Yeah. My my mom was outside. Did you Chicago. do it outside of Chicago? Really? Just uh -huh. in Chicago. Did you go all, every travel with the circus? I traveled. I traveled almost almost. We made did the the blue circus at that time was doing the sort of not the middle not quite south and not quite north, right in the middle. And we went as far west as maybe, um, cool. I don't even know, I forgot. But we went a little yeah. bit west and we came back. Probably, mm -hmm. we probably all got to see you, we don't know. And you didn't even know it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been uh, hanging out uh, since the uh, all lockdown stuff and uh, uh, doing lots of stuff, a lot, a lot of talk, communicating, you know, talking on the phone, yes. texting, yeah. Zooming, whatever I can. Um, but I also started uh, 
um, I had a tree <clears throat> planted in my yard. It's a really cool tree. It's a That's maple nice. tree, red maple. And um, it's really a very pretty tree. And I decided to hang a couple bird feeders on it. So, Lovely. yeah. And all these little finch finches come. I mean, they. it's like now it's got very, very popular. They're about yeah. six, six little perches on it around. And uh, then there's the, little, the tree branches. And mm-hmm. by now there's so many birds out. It's like, it's like, I feel like it's like a deli where I've got to, a, a, <laughs> you got to like a little grab a number because they're all waiting in line to go, go to the bird feeding. The squirrels are the ones that come after it. Right, that's, that's very right. true. So I'm, I've been doing battle with squirrels in a good way. You know, just like <laughs> slamming the door. I know nothing too violent, but um, yeah, picture picture a long bird feeder and uh, the squirrels jump. Yeah, well, I, have, I have a hummingbird feeder. Yeah. But I don't hang it from a tree. I have it from hang it the tree. I pulled all the branches back. And then there's this one pole that comes down to grab the thing. And mm-hmm. the squirrels would shinny down that pole and actually hold on to the bird feeder and stick their noses in and eat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I, I, put, I love it. I put a little cardboard hat on it. They're they're really bright. Those the yeah, 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 squirrels. Yeah, yeah. The squirrels and are bright. I think those guys confounded by my little cardboard hat. Now, what I think what you guys are touching on is that a lot of us have been out in nature. That makes a lot of sense. Now, Sam, what about you? How are you yeah. a little bit artsy outside of your acting? Uh, sadly, I have no hobbies um, except for lassoing. I, you know, as Brooklyn and Danny know, so occasionally I lasso a, a rubber trash can. But uh, yeah, Brian's baking bread. I hear Michael Fassbender races cars, and I, I'm, he's not in the. Movie. I'm impressed. I wish I had. I, I'm sort of a professional dog walker right now. That's about it. Oh, oh how, same, how I, about I could use a, a, a stroll, need a, man. Yeah. Now, how yeah, about I would you, take Angelina? you for a stroll, Bob. <laughs> how about you, Angelina? Oh God, um, I feel like I'm really boring. I spend a lot of time studying foreign policy. I'm one of the. I'm like a closet. That's impressive. Uh-huh. Um, but I think my creativity is my kids. I think because I, I'm being with them and making up stories before bed or just being silly with them. I think um, really nothing I'm doing, just watching each of them become uniquely who they are mm-hmm. um, and being around it and going into each of their whether it be their rooms and talking to them or developing, um, helping them develop. It's, it's not as much me, but it's, it's um, my mom was like that. She was always- but You're getting a lot out of that. Love seeing you're other people's creativity. You, it's another world. I, I was babysitting last night. I was yeah. babysitting all night because my daughter went to the studio and I had my grandson, he's 11. Oh, great. I've been watching Avatar all freaking night. Uh-huh. And he's watching it again now. And so I'm like, hooey. So I got the conversations you're having. I mean, I think this is the thing with kids and, and not to be plugging a film, but like why you put certain things that are what Disney to what conversations you have and well his, the, the parts of their minds you develop or the parts yeah. of humanity or well which the characters about, they relate their, to. Their dad is gone and there's a there's a uh, one of the, the people in the well not a people, the cartoon characters is Katar, who I like very much. Mm-hmm. And uh, she was talking to her father who had left her when she was very young and he had the same experience. And so when his father came on and said, um, I'm sorry, but I had to leave you. I had to go off toward a fight. But every minute and every night I thought about you and, and, and your brother and I cried to be home. So I, I could feel that striking a chord with him. And mm-hmm. I stopped the tape and I said, OK, I said, so how did you feel about that? You actually got an explanation for your father's absence, did that make you feel any better? He said, yes. Mm. I said, did you imagine maybe that was, was what your daddy wanted to say to you? He said, yes. Mm. But that's, you know, I know that more was going on, you know, but he was giving me the yes, the one mm. monosyllabic, but I could tell he was really. But when, when art gets it right, when creativity gets it right, right, it, it's that deep place in us that then reaches that personal. So true. Someone else and it, so and, true. and we share. It's it's true. 
Sure. Well, and that's actually something about the film that really resonated with me was that it, it, you know, it could be everything going on in the world right now, but it just has such a heart. And even with that great story, as we all know, movies are nothing without the story. Thea, I wanted to ask you, you know, about, can you, can you talk about some of the complexity? Because obviously the script is so nuanced, but at the same time, you're really dealing with a lot technically as well. Can you talk about some of the balancing those two things? Um, firstly, I'd just like to say, I'm so grateful, Angie, that you're on this. Yes. To, I thought that, that arts was just absolutely brilliant. Um, so do you mean in terms of, A, how did I deal with all of these crazy people? Um, which, like I said before, I, I'm, I know there's somebody just outside that door with a huge trophy for me now that you've all appreciated what it was like. Um, so I'll say two things. One is in terms of shooting this movie was very much like simultaneously working on two movies at the same time. Um, because of the technical aspect of it. So on the one hand, we started the whole process with the voice actors um, because the animators needed their voices to begin to be laid down for the animation journey to begin. So we started with that. Then we shot all of our live action stuff. And then we went back in and we shot the virtual aspects of the film, which was whenever we had just animals in a scene together. And those scenes we often re revisited. So we went back in and we did them several times just to get tiny, tiny nuances, changes in the actors' voices, changes in their performances, made a huge change to the animators and what they were doing. Um, so in that sense, the, the technicality of it was certainly unlike anything I've ever done before. Um, and then the other big thing to answer your question that we, that we had to monitor, if you like, throughout, particularly throughout post, which is something that a lot of the, the voice actors were still around with me, um, and Mike White in particular, was monitoring, you said, heartfelt, which of course, we wanted to capture the heartfelt spirit of the book, which was the most important thing. Um, but there are also some very important big issues captured within the book that Catherine Applegate for me just managed to catch a level that meant that when I first read the book with my kids who were nine and 10 at the time, um, Angie, I know you had this experience. They just absolutely loved it. And they connected with it emotionally on a level that they really appreciated the journey that these characters go on. And I knew reading it as an adult and as a parent that I was appreciating something slightly different in certain aspects. Um, and so we wanted to monitor throughout. We wanted to monitor A, the, 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 hu the humor, because we always wanted to balance it and keep that aspect going. Um, but not to be afraid of connecting with the emotionality of what is a really very powerful story. Yeah. And now that that's actually one of the things about the film too. It, it allows for conversations about how we can advocate for the proper care and treatment of animals. And Helen, I wondered if you had any feelings that you'd like to share about that message and did, did participating in this film make you feel a certain kind of way? You know, it was a fascinating technical experience. And, and that's the amazing thing about our job is that we're always, we're constantly being exposed to completely new experiences. And as this is, this digital, uh, you know, uh, a press junket, it, it, you know, it's the first for all of us. So, you know, that it, it's amazing that the, the technique, I was in awe of the technique, the technicalities that there had to be uh, you know, on top of, uh, it, it was extraordinary. Her, her work was extraordinary. Um, it's funny, I was just thinking uh, with Danny, you know, uh, you know, nature and animals are so much a part of our life and our existence and the insects and, and, and the diseases, you know, we're, we're only, I, I feel we're at the very, very beginning of our, of our knowledge of actually how important the natural world is to us. 
Um, and this COVID, for example, is an incredible lesson in that direction. Um, but, you know, I, I also went, <laughs> I went down the bird feeder um, thing for my entertainment and, and the squirrels and the chipmunks and watching them all work it out between themselves. And then what happens is a great big black bear comes along and takes the bird feeder <laughs> and goes on. <laughs> Just go away with it. Just go. With it. Uh, I haven't seen the black bear situation yet in the in the Hollywood Hills, but nature is awesome. it. It's it's not uh, it's not necessarily very nice nature. No, I'm sure it was. <laughs> well, in but, fact, yes. Please go ahead. I want to ask Brooklyn and Ariana what they loved about the book and maybe how they feel about the environment and what all us crazy adults need to understand. Well, I actually read the book before I even started acting. I read it in third grade. And when I got the job, I was looking through my camera roll and I saw a picture of me reading it to the class. And I was like, no way, like that's crazy. Um, but yeah, when I read it, I, it was actually one of my favorite books I've ever read in my entire life because I've always been an animal lover and I've always wanted to like help animals in any way I possibly can. Um, so reading it was very like touching to me and I loved Bob. That was definitely one of my favorite characters. Um, but yeah, I mean, as a kid, I want to spread awareness for kids my age as well to help animals in every way possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, when I read it, it was very touching and I learned a lot from it as well. And I thought it was a really cool story. So especially when I met Catherine Applegate, it was a cool moment for me because I kind of just thanked her. I was like, thank you for like bringing awareness, especially for kids to read, to help animals. And like, I don't know, it was really cool. And I, I love art and painting and everything. So like combining my animal loving like side of me and my art side of me was really cool to see. And I'm just very thankful to play that character. Ariana, I, were those your drawings that that you that were used in the film? Yes, actually. So when I had breaks during school, I actually like drew some of the drawings. Um, so like the Bob one, and like a few that you'll see. Um, but yeah, it's really cool, and it was such a cool like opportunity for me to put my own art side into the movie, and it's something I'll always remember too. Man, you're like the Bob Ross of this group, I'll tell you. <laughs> I love also your relationship with your dad in the movie. And I thought yeah. that it was so lovely seeing that a child and the moment when you ask your dad to understand how to help. Right, yeah. Dad has to make the choice of his like professional career, his life, his responsibilities or doing the right thing. Yeah. And, and that he is pushed from the child to understand that and the choice he makes. I, I love that That's moment. A cool moment for me to play because I, kids can also make change. And like, especially as I'm so young, I wanna make change as well. So like having that moment of the kid talking to the adult of how to help and how to change is a really cool moment. And Ramon is also a great person to play with. So that was cool. Brooklyn, what do you think about, so what are your thoughts on the book and what do you think that you wanna share with all of us adults? Um, so I read the book with my grandma, my Mimi love you memes um but also I read it out loud to my brother and my mom and my brother was really young and I remember reading it and I honestly loved Ruby but I think it teaches us a good lesson about keeping our promises because you know Ruby would have never gotten free if Ivan did keep his promise to Stella and I think that's something very beautiful but I I love the book so much that I lended it to my best friend and I told her to read it because it was something so special. And my, I loved Bob and cause he was like so funny, but I also loved, I also loved the sentiment that of love and like how um, Ivan doesn't care for Ruby in the first place, but he, even though he doesn't care for Ruby and then like when Stella kind of tells him to keep his promise or, or um, tells him that he has to promise to get Ruby or he makes the promise to get Ruby out in the wild, he, he works his best to do that. And that is something that, a lesson that we can all take in. And I also heard that you had a very special outfit that you like to wear when you're recording. Can you tell us about that? Confirm or deny the rumor, please. <laughs> it is confirmed. <laughs> so I met 
I saw Angie two times. The first time I met her was at the Governor's Awards, and then I saw her at the Critics' Choice Awards. When I saw her at the Critics' Choice Awards, I was like, hey, we should wear elephant onesies in the recording room. And I go home, and I'm like, mama, 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 please buy me an Angie elephant onesies. And my mom was like, I'm buying Angelina Jolie an elephant onesie <laughs> to match yeah. with my daughter. <laughs> What even size does she wear? In my <laughs> excitement when I got it. <laughs> yeah. And I was there and in the onesie and I was bouncing around like a fart and skit. I was like, when's Angie coming? When I, when, I, when are we going to wear elephant onesies? And my dad's like, uh, you know, it's probably hot or she might forget it or something. She comes in, she's like, and she like <laughs> drops off the stuff and she's like, you got in it for me? And so she put it on and me and her have a selfie together wearing our elephant onesies. But in the end, it got kind of hot, but we just tied it around our waist. <laughs> um, but Angie <laughs> also, recording. Angie also <laughs> bought me this stuffed animal with a little baby elephant and a big elephant holding each other's trunks for Easter. I think it's safe to say we became like the elephant family in the, like, <laughs> we got really into our characters, us too. <laughs> yes, yes. Love it. I highly recommend to everybody that doesn't already own a onesie to do it. It will change your life. Um, and yeah. Sam, I wanted to ask you a question from Ben O'Shea. Uh, he wants to know, thanks to COVID-19, humans around the world are cooped up in their homes right now, a lot like the animals in the mall. So what can the one and only Ivan teach us about getting through this predicament? Hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, like Papillon or something. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Okay. I don't really know the answer to that, but I think Ivan would definitely have something to teach us for sure about isolation. Yeah, the real story is, is if you've seen the documentary, it's really moving, you know, and um, it's, a, it's a very, it's a heartbreaking story, the real story. So I'm sure that Ivan would have something to say about it. I think you, you, you're... Uh... You're relying on your friends to speak, being in that circle, of the closest circle yeah. that you have. Especially yeah. if we're on in the pandemic, you're you're looking for your family or your friends that are the people that are you're socially distancing from, but that are the safest. So you try to yeah. do that, and also then you got, you know, I mean, I don't, you had a TV in the we had a TV we watched in the uh, in the in the domain. Brian gave us a, t uh, Mac gave us a TV. You, not me. He wouldn't give me a TV. You. <laughs> so you, we watched a lot of. Yes, that's right. We were very familiar with all the, the, the hit shows of the day. Yeah, we knew exactly what was going on. All the, all the Westerns. Westerns were the best. Rawhide, sure. Oh, yeah. Man. You know, cut them off at the pass, <laughs> baby. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, Beretta. and you know what's. Speak, oh God, these are all so good. Uh, speaking of friends, I'd like to uh, talk to our parrot and our bunny friend, that's Philippa and Ron. Um, I wanted to ask you a very serious question about how you got into the right frame of mind to play your character. Ha! Ron, would you like to go first? <laughs> oh, ladies first, please. You first. Um. Well, it was very simple. I thought to myself, what do parrots do? Um, aside from Gilbert Gottfried's performance in The Lion King, um, I thought I would look up some parrot videos, and I did. And then I tried to make my squawkiest, most parody sound uh, in my house. Um, you know, for everyone else to hear. And I actually asked my husband, I was like, does this sound parody enough? And he was like, totally, that's great. So I was just walking around my house being like, rah, 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 for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> very artsy, very artsy. Um, mine was very simple. I don't really have many voices. I don't do, um, I'm pretty new. I've only been acting for like six years. I don't even know how I got on this Zoom call, really. I'm just happy to see these people. Uh, so I just did my voice. And then sometimes they would tell me to change it a little bit. And then sometimes Danny would tell me to try different things. And then I would say, OK, Danny, you're very aggressive for your frame. So of course, I will listen to you. Uh, and then that was pretty much it for me. 
and then and in turn now i'm in, in like a lot of movies and tv shows so let's just keep it going there you go. and yeah. do you find yourself with a new affinity for fire trucks I've always loved fire trucks. They are my favorite of of mm -hmm. all trucks. They have they have a truck that has the most power and also has water. How could you hate a fire truck? And if I could live my whole life in a fire truck like a bunny, I would I would do that. I I understand Murphy's position the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and Ramon, we've heard uh, Theo discuss like some of the challenges in filming, but could you talk about? Specifically, the challenge you're, you're sort you've been in several effects driven films, and what were you seeing when you were on set? What what were you acting with? Uh, well, some amazing people. I mean, the most the, one of the greatest gifts and one of the greatest challenges was probably Brian Cranston, uh, incredibly gifted and wonderful <laughs> boy. Oh boy, he'd like break into his little Walter White character every once in a while and start mm -hmm. getting a little aggressive. But um, it was a real, it was really interesting to see some of the characters that played, you know, Ivan, Ben Bishop, who was amazing. Um, you know, he'd be wearing like a, a spandex all over his body and be stilts, but he really, you know, when I watched the film, I could actually see so much of his performance. I could see so much of what he gave to that character's physicality, the eye. It was really kind of incredible to work along him. And even, you know, there was a, character that played Ruby that would get into this small baby green elephant outfit and be walking around the set. And after a while, you'd kind of just go, that's a baby elephant. You know, it was, it was actually nice to have that. Um, I've done stuff where there's nothing there. So it was actually really nice to have, and there's something about acting along, you know, real person. So Ivan having been there and having him really react to you and perform uh, as well as Ruby uh, and the, and the people that did Stella. I mean, it was just, it was a great gift to be able to have those actual people performing and they're incredibly skilled. Um, so it helped us. I know Ariana, myself, Awine, Brian, like to be able to work along those characters um, was really great. I just want to circle back actually to something that you asked earlier in regards to the message, you know, just about the film and the times that we're in. And I feel like being, we've all been sort of indoors and I think it's allowed for a lot of introspection, right? which is I think really similar to what Ivan goes through this, in this beautiful sort of coming of age experience where he gets to really, and I love the message that you get to find yourself even later in life, you know? Um, we're continually on this journey and here we are in this very interesting time where you get to sort of be home and whether you're baking bread or I'm cooking, I'm almost like a botanist out here. I can like plant and doing all these things, but also just looking within and, and what's going on, whether it's with yourself, country it's just a really interesting time and i think these moments actually allow us to hopefully come out of it maybe a bit more evolved um and i think for ivan that's exactly his experience um so i think that's a pretty powerful message and in particular to where we are right now definitely i agree because when i was doing my bit it just came back we, we tried i mean when i first came in i mean danny's saying like do more do more of you, like you say it. Do more. Mm. So my whole, my major experience in, in doing this part of Henrietta was just to be me, <laughs> come back and find myself, mm. and to back do that. To the mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and that was actually something that I wanted to ask you, Shaka. Is there like a particular aspect of Henrietta that you feel like is very deeply you? Because she's fun. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Henry and I are, are, are very much alike. I'm like usually the one that um, the, the person that people come to when they want the truth, but they don't want it to, they want it told in a sort of a funny way. But the real truth, yeah, if you want the truth, don't ask me. You know, it's like that, but because I'm going to give it to you. But yeah, I found Henry being like very. I mean, I just came back to me. That's how I am. Yeah, Henrietta, I think, is a great ambassador for me to just cut poultry out of my diet, period. <laughs> just so you know. Um, Brian, Juan Fernandez wanted to ask uh, the, more about your character and how you're neither a full-on villain nor are you a full-on hero, but 
can you talk about what complexity your particular performance brought that might not have been in the script? Like, just do, talk to me about the acting craft. Uh, well. Well, I, I'm, not an, I'm not a thespian for a reason. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, don't, I'm, I mean, I'm not an actor or actress for a reason. Uh, I'm a, you could have well, fooled me, Chaka. <laughs> But uh, you know, um, what about you? So what? Uh, going back to Brian, I, I, what do you? That's the best thing I I found, like I said, was myself. In this, in this, in, in this character, um, we went around and around and around with it. How do I say this? How should I say that? Uh, me and uh, close the door. <laughs> me and Danny and. Uh, Dan and I going around in circles, how should I do this? And finally, when I said it without any thought, without thinking about it, just said it. Then everybody said, yeah, that's right. But just want to hear your essence. <laughs> just Well, that's the thing. And I mean, that's, and that's what you guys have to bring to the table is your essence. And that's why I think that, you know, the character of Mac is also a really interesting one because you're sort of, there's a lot of pressure on that character. Brian, can you talk about that? Well, it started with Mike's script, which I, which resonated with me and, and the plight of not just the, the animals and their particular emotional journey, but also with Mac. And I met with Thea a couple times before we started shooting and we really discussed how we'd lay this out. And I too saw him as a, a, a man who has flaws, but also is attempting to make things right. Um, Ivan was like a child to him. And so he wasn't about to abandon his child. So he wanted to figure out how do I embrace the fact that he's now a full-fledged silverback gorilla and how do I live with that? And so it was, it was to discover those nuances and allow for the character to be vulnerable. Um, so we talked about it and I pitched the idea that Mac wears a, a wig and that at one point the, the wig flies up and he's bald and it embarrasses him. And I also had a, a stomach pad to make him a little <laughs> And that a girdle, so that when he's doing his master thing, that he would be wearing a girdle. Yeah. And so those kinds of things that were, that were personal vulnerabilities that he didn't want people to see. So he was presenting himself as someone he, he wanted to project, but it wasn't really him. And at the end, then it, it came full circle. Uh, and Thea said, then at the end, we, we embrace, and he embraces who he truly is and allows himself to show who he really is at the end. No more wig, uh, allowing himself to be who he is. And, and he's happy and proud to see that Ivan has moved into the next chapter in his life. <laughs> and how much CG was involved in you riding a tiny bicycle, Brian? No. <laughs> you know, you look at a bicycle and you go, oh, I can ride that. It's actually much harder than it appears. Um, no, CG, I, I rode the bicycle. Uh, it was it was difficult, um, uh, but it was fun. And I fell down several times because it's slick and uh, your your knees are basically up in your face when you're riding this little thing. Um, uh, you know, I, I didn't, when I first saw the bicycle, I noticed on the side of it, it said, property of Danny DeVito. And I went, oh. <laughs> oh. Was that Danny's I idea? To work every day. <laughs> I rode that to work every day. I kept it in my room. I, I, I knew it. Yeah. Fabulous. I take baths with it, too. It's really I bet cool. you did. Yeah. Very nice. I know you did. Now, Mike, uh, Jamie Philbrick with WeLiveEntertainment.com has a question for you. Uh, please talk about the always challenging process of adaptation. Are, are, you know, obviously it's heartbreaking to leave some things behind, but can you expand on that? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, I, I feel like I was really lucky because the book is so, um, the characters 
are so rich and and it's so emotional and 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 very soulful for a children's book or a young adult book i don't know how you necessarily classify it but um but yeah i think that it needed like a structure like a lot of these adaptations where you just need to make it more have a, a more of a plot in a sense because uh the plot isn't really front and center in the book so that was the biggest challenge and just giving Ivan and Mac and, you know, arcs, uh, Mac's arc is pretty solid in the book, but, you know, Ivan having a, you know, an arc that is more um, classic as far as like a Disney film would, would require. So that was the biggest challenge and and working with Thea and the producers and Disney. Uh, it was, it was, I think our biggest challenge as far as adaptation. And Angelina, what was it about this project? Uh, this question, by the way, comes from Courtney Howard. Uh, what was it about this project that make you made you want to take on a producer role in addition to lending your voice as a character? Uh, well, thank you, Courtney. I uh, my one of my children read the book and said uh, that they loved it, and I read it, and we kind of talked about why it was special and why it meant so much to them, and. And um, and so I started to pursue where is it? Is it being made? What's happening? And and um, and started to get involved and and looked at and even the early drafts. It was very interesting. And one of the things Mike did that I think was very special is I'd seen it start to go down a road where it really started to become a, a light, fun kids cart like action, uh, sim a simpler story. It was easy to somebody to come in and just try to pick a few threads and make it quite simple and add some action here and, and to really make it what it is intended to be. And Disney and Mike and everybody involved um, really to, to understand that it, it has, it's hard. It's not, a, it's not a light film. It deals with heavy issues, but it is charming and fun and full of life, but, um, but it's deceptive. In, in in kind of what the, the packaging. So I thought very, very important and uh, and wanted to wanted to get involved. I like the messages in it. And and I'm excited that this young generation as well, I think all of us older people will appreciate it for many reasons, but I know this young generation is really very aware of what is happening in the world to our natural habitats, to these animals, what's happening in Congo and, and losing ground, what's happening, um, with the gorillas, the elephants, um, and and they're angry, and they want to really be clear about what kind of treatment is appropriate, uh, what kind of captivity is appropriate. Um, again, being against poaching, being against preservation of natural habitats. So I think this this will, you know, this represents them. It represents Ariana's character. Represents them. And I think that's a, that's strong for them today to see that their their actions can make change. Oh yeah, and you know, kind of in the same vein, uh, Thea Don K had a question. Uh, can you discuss the challenges uh, of addressing an issues of animal captivity that while also making it a fun, endearing film? Like, were there particular visuals you had decided against, and things like that? Um, thank you, Don. Easy question. Um, yes, it's, it was a big concern from the beginning to, again, try to not make it feel like a documentary that's been made already on the, um, on the, the real life story of, of Ivan the gorilla. Um, and this is also, it's not just any studio, it's Disney. And so we definitely knew that there was a tone that we had to get right. And that was everything from Mike and I in the beginning working on the script and throughout um, to endlessly looking with the designer, uh, Molly Hughes, as to exactly how the domains would work physically, um, literally like how big the bars are so that on camera they would have the right feel and that sometimes there are some shots obviously we chose very carefully when we came to edit it that certain scenes 
There are no bars to be seen whatsoever. And in other moments, we've chosen very carefully when the presence of the bars are there so that they are a constant reminder. Um, you know, it's not easy when your leading character is behind bars for 80% of the movie. Um, and you have to hold at its heart that he has, he creates a dream. He's given a gift by Stella um, to create a gift of a, of a dream to, to get out. And as Brooklyn put it beautifully earlier, to hold on to a promise that he gives to Stella. Um, and so throughout the movie, for example, we also made the choice to have there's next to no green used in the movie. Mm. Um, so that when you get to either Ivan's flashbacks from when he's a kid, which we made as green as possible and made as like the Congo as possible, um, or the very end when he gets to where he needs to go. Um, again, we made that as green and as lush as possible. But every choice up to that point with both the designer and the costume designer, we did everything to keep as much green away as possible. And if you look very carefully, um, the biggest decisions we had to make, I thought because I'm a Brit and then I realized this wasn't gonna be a problem, was exit signs that over here are green, but I don't think they are in America. So um, although there's a, nice symbolism in that we didn't even have to deal with that so actually yeah that was one of the main decisions that we made very very early on that's so interesting you thought that 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 really does it, it makes an impact i didn't realize that but thinking of the film it does make a huge strong choice now believe it or not we've almost reached the very end of today's press conference but i won't forgive myself if i don't ask danny devito how much of yourself did you put into Bob the Dog? Uh, my, uh, let's see. <laughs> well, first of all, it was a pleasure being in this movie. I love working with everybody in the film and uh, Mike and Thea and all the characters that were with me in the, I mean, you know, I'm an animated dog. So I, I kind of spoke with Sam and, and Helen and everybody, you know, the, but I put a lot in the, the character. I feel like the thing about Bob for me was uh, uh, I wanted a friend. I, and I always wanted a bigger brother in my life. And uh, I want an older brother. Now, I don't know if he's older than I am, but I know he's bigger than I am. And that gorilla was my, my best friend, is my best friend. And, um, you know, I always wanted a soft place to sleep. And his belly is just so so soft and i could just think about right now just sinking into that belly and maybe eating a little piece of pizza first and <laughs> some cowboy movies and just let my eyes go and go to sleep with them you're making me sleepy i'm sorry but i had a great one and only bob I'm thanks Wait, can i just can i just quickly say thank you all to all of you um Obviously, we should really be standing on some podium somewhere, passing a mic down the line, uh, welcoming everybody to come in and see our movie. And so sadly, we can't be in cinemas at the moment, but at least we are blessed with having the option of putting it at, right out there to everybody on Disney+. Plus. Um, but thank you all so much, all of you, for everything that you put into this movie. It's so cool to see you all together because I never got this. I never got this moment. I had you in little pieces and now I've got all of you. Um, so it's amazing. Thank you all so much for doing this and for, as I said, everything that you put into the movie. You're all brilliant and I'm really, really proud of it. Yeah. Uh, thank and you. That you did an amazing job. Yeah. You're the best. Great to be in your film. Yeah, we love you. Thank Me you. Too. you. <laughs> That's exactly why she is the master of herding cats. Yes. Uh, yes. And yes. we have already reached the end of today's press conference. And so for all of our participants, you are now welcome to wave and say goodbye, turn off your video and mute yourselves. Bye. And bye, bye everyone. Bye, 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 bye everyone. Bye, celebrity. Bye, Ron. Bye, Angelina. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
May <laughs> everyone watching, may your days be full of soft bellies and pizza. And again, I'd like to thank Brian Cranston, Angelina Jolie, Sam Rockwell, Danny DeVito, Helen Mirren, Chaka Khan, Chaka Khan, Philippa Sue, Brooklyn Prince, Ariana Greenblatt, Ramon Rodriguez, Ron Funches, Mike White, Thea Sherrick, and I am Gray Drake. Everybody stay safe out there and thank you for being with us.